Hi guys, this episode is the first one for the following, I don't know how many, episodes where we are going to talk about extensive form games in detail. All right, well, first of all, let's start with uh, uh, describing uh, intuitively what we mean by extensive form games. Sometimes I'm going to call them dynamic games. I exactly mean the same thing. Well, First of all, as similar to the normal form games or strategic form games, uh, there are several things that you should be clear about when you describe an extensive form game. What is this? Well, the set of players. Who are the players and how many of them we have? Second, the order of moves. So which player moves first? Which mo uh, player moves second, third, etc.? Um, well, then payoffs. Well, uh, the moves of those players are going to lead to some outcome eventually and so the players uh, preferences over those outcomes is an important parameter that we should know. Well, actions. So we are going to be clear about what we mean by actions versus strategy uh, in the uh, uh, static games or you know normal form or strategic form games. Actions and strategies were exactly the same thing. How, or, or in simultaneous move games, they're the same thing. However, in extensive form games, they are uh, significantly different objects. All right, but nevertheless, actions are basically uh, alternatives that players can choose whenever they're called upon to move or, or make an action or make a move. Well, a probability distribution over any exogenous events. All right, so we should also be specific about this. Well, um, in this chapter, I'm not going to really talk about uh, games with incomplete information, all right, um, or uh, 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 exogenous uh, uh, events, but nevertheless, I'm going to include it in our description of extensive form games. Um, anything else? Well, extensive form games are richer setups than simultaneous move games. In those games, we can study few things like commitment, uh, repeated interaction, uh, uh, notions like uh, reputation, trust, uh, and signaling, for example. Um, well, we can analyze, we, we, we will first describe extensive form games, but when we talk about the analysis of extensive form games, well, we can analyze them either as a normal form or strategic form game, or just leave it as is in an extensive form game and analyze accordingly. Well, that depends on uh, what type of question you're tackling, all right? So it's, it's a matter of choice. We're not there yet. Um, and when we sort of solve or, or describe an extensive form game, we usually draw a game tree and we talk about notions like subgame. So these are concepts, game tree, subgame. Uh, these are concepts I defined um, uh, quite in detail in my undergrad game theory course. So I assume that you guys know or remember all of those. If you don't, uh, please go back or I am going to uh, put the link uh, under the description of this video. So please check those videos first and refresh your memory and then come back because what we are going to do um, in this episode and the few next episodes, uh, we are going to uh, define extensive form games in a more formal and detailed way. Well, why is that so? Well, because uh, the, the concept of game tree, the, 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 the sub game definition coming from game trees, well, you know, the ability of drawing game tree, these are very nice, very intuitive uh, things uh, to solve or approach a, uh, an extensive form game. But the problem is that when the game gets you know, a, a bit more complicated, like the, the players have infinitely many strategies, or, uh, you know, you know, several players are moving simultaneously, and then there is some sort of also sequentiality in the moves, etc. So when the structure of the game gets complicated, you know, drawing game tree is going to become almost impossible, for example, in repeated games. And also, the, the concept of subgame, you're not going to be able to visualize the subgame because you're not able to draw the game tree. So for that reason, and we need a more detailed description and more formal description, and it's coming. Okay, so now we're going to start describing extensive form games in detail, but I would like to warn you before we start, it's going to be a very long definition, and within this definition, there will be a bunch of uh, notations we will need to use, and so I'm going to uh, number each important uh, uh, parts of an extensive form game, and then I'm going to provide some other notations as a side or explanations as a side note. 
Okay, so let's start. An extensive form game must have following ingredients, following uh, uh, properties. First, there should be a finite set of players. Well, uh, definitely we can describe extensive form games for infinitely many players, but for this course and for simplicity, let's assume it is finite. We use or I denote the set of players as capital N, and these are the players, one, two, three, all the way up to N. We usually denote players by I, J. Okay, so I, J element of N means these are the name of the players. A set, so very important uh, concept, histories. All right, a set H of sequences, maybe finite or infinite, depending on uh, the, the, the length of the game. Uh, this set H must satisfy the, the following three properties. Well, first of all, the empty sequence, uh, this is empty set, uh, basically, must be an element of uh, the set of histories. Well, we call this null history or uh, initial history. It's basically denoting the beginning of the game, all right? Well, we need that because we need to specify uh, as a notation what the beginning of the game is. Well, second, well, this is how we are going to denote the sequences, all right? Well, by the way, when I say sequence, these are sequence of actions. So each action, uh, I'm sorry, in each sequence is, a, is, is, is an ordered list of actions and each action is taken by some of the players along the path, along the way, as this game is, is, is unfolding or played. So this is how we denote a sequence, a, k, k from 1 to k, or sometimes as a vector, a1, a2, all the way up to a, k. All right, so for any k greater, capital K, greater than uh, or equal to zero, uh, we have that a sequence is an element. So this sequence is going to be an element of the set of histories. If this is the case, well then, you know what? Uh, ignore the last action, a sub k, uh, well, the remaining uh, sequence, a1, a2, all the way up to ak minus 1, must also be a history, okay? So that's the, uh, a, 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 an important property. So basically, um, when I have a history of actions, I ignore the last action, and the remaining sequence sh should still be a history. All right. Well, obviously, I can I can keep going that, and so eventually, and as I eliminate the last action, last action, I'm going to end up with the you know no uh, element in that sequence. So we call it the null history or the initial history. Okay. Well, by the way, the k can be infinite. Um, all right. So that means it's an an, an infinite uh, history. Well, we talk about the infinite histories here. Obviously, is a, in an infinite history, we cannot really eliminate the last action because there is no really last action. Don't forget, infinity is not a number you pick, and so you cannot subtract a number from an infinity. But we define the property for the infinite sequence as follows: If an infinite sequence denoted by a sub k k from one to infinity satisfy the following, uh, the, the, the subsequence a k, k from 1 to capital K, is an H for every positive integer k. Well, then we say this infinite history, the, this infinite sequence, I'm sorry, is also a history. All right? So basically, uh, consider all truncations of an infinite sequence. M truncations means, for example, keep the first hundred actions and then ignore the rest or keep first thousand and then ignore the rest or keep the first hundred thousand and then ignore the rest so when you do all of those for any k so for any truncation and if all those remaining sort of subsequences are in the set h well then we say this infinite sequence is also in h all right well in many uh, simple examples, we don't really look at infinite uh, 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 games. We usually look at finite games, so you may not really need to worry about infinite sequences. But for example, in bargaining theory or in repeated games, for example, we do look at uh, infinite horizon games. And so the infinite sequences are going to be a very important part of those uh, uh, games. All right, so. 
Uh, the history basically must satisfy these three properties. All right, so here are some uh, important remarks or side notes. So again, as I said, each member of this set H is what called history. It's a history of the game. A standard element of this history, uh, the, the set of histories is usually denoted by H. All right. And again, as I said, each element of those sequences are just actions. I'm going to give an example. It's hopefully going to make a, a much more sense. So if a history H, um, sometimes, as, as I said, I denote it as a, a sequence, A sub K, K from one to capital K is, is, is a history. Well, we call this terminal history. All right. So these are going to play an important role. Terminal history. If K is infinity, meaning um, it's an infinite sequence or, or there exists no action such that when I add this action A at the end of my history, so I denote this new sequence as H comma A, which as a vector can be denoted by A1, A2, all the way up to A capital K. Remember, this is what H is. So this is H and then comma A. So I have a new, a bigger, uh, a sequence. Well, this sequence is not going to be an H. All right. So there exists no A. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I put no here. So there exists no A, an action, where when I add this action at the end of my history, the, the, the new sequence is a, a history. What do I mean by terminal history? Actually, it's not really complicated. It's simple. It basically tells me the histories where the game will be over if it is a finite horizon game or alternatively it's going to be an infinite uh, uh, history where remember the game is never over. Okay well we denote uh, the set of terminal histories with this uh, letter capital Z. All right. I don't know why Z, but a standard element, although it is a history, because we want to underline that it is a terminal history, we denote them by Z. All right. Small Z element of capital Z. All right. So one more uh, and, and, and uh, one more sort of note. Take any history H, which is non-terminal, meaning uh, the game is not yet over at the end of this history. All right. So H is selected from H minus Z. So it is not a terminal history, but it is a history. Well, then I define this set A of H. Well, A of H is basically uh, means the set of available actions after uh, history H. All right. So the game played the history, some history happened, right? And then at the end of this history, what are the available actions that the players can choose? Well, this set is denoted by A of H, all right? Well, mathematically, how do I define this? You know, actions A, where are they coming from? We haven't defined it yet, but actions such that when I include or, or put this action at the end of my history, H comma A, remember I define it uh, here, is going to be another history. Well, this is why we're working on non-terminal histories, right? If it is a terminal history, I know that there's, I mean, this is not gonna be, uh, H comma A is not gonna be in history. All right, um, so let's give a very, very simple example. The space, I think, is, is enough. So suppose that, well, I will be considering a simple finite uh, game. Player one moves first, she has three available actions, A, B, and C. And then player two moves here as well, all right? And then here as well. Well, let's suppose this is here, at least player two cannot distinguish whether it's B and C. So it's not a perfect information game. Uh, so A, B, and here X, Y, X, Y. And then the game is over. So here are the payoffs, okay? so. What are the histories in this game? Well, the set of histories, right? There's not just one, but there are many, are the following. Well, first off, uh, it's just a notation. It means the null history. Well, remember at this null history, player one is actually the moving player. Well, you'll see I'm gonna use this notation. Well, then A is a history, all right? That means player one has played A. 
This is what it summarizes. History summarizes the past uh, uh, play. Uh, well, B is also history. C is also history. Is that it? Well, there are a bunch of other histories. Well, once I have more than one component, I put them in a bracket. All right. Um, you don't have to. But AA is also, if you like, you can put comma. Uh, up to you, I mean. So AA is also history. And this is a terminal history because a, after AA, the game will be over, meaning there's no action when I put it, for example, X. When I put X, this is a history of this game. No, it's not. All right, so because the game is going to be over. All right, so AA is in history. Obviously, AB is also history. What else? BX is history. BY is history. CX is history. And CY is history. And that's it. I have four, uh, six, eight... 10 histories total. And if you go back to those properties, well, there's no infinite sequence anyhow, but you'll see that all of those properties do actually hold. All right? Well, once again, for example, uh, try to understand how these uh, descriptions are holding here. Well, for example, if you take a history, say A, all right, so your history is equal to A, well, what is the uh, uh, well, the letters are going to confuse. So your history is C, for example. So what is this set? The set of available actions after history C. Well, simple. So what are the available actions after history C? As you see, it's either X or Y. Right? Same for set of, uh, I'm sorry, set of actions after history B. However, set of hist uh, actions after history A is not X, Y, it's A, B. All right? Well, what about uh, the following? What if your history is empty history? So what is the available actions after the, uh, um, right after the uh, uh, null history? Well, it is only a, B, and C, all right? So those small A, B, X, Y, these are not part of, I mean, actions that, that can be chosen right after history empty set, because empty set means the initial history or node, all right? Sometimes, you know, you can, if you remember in the undergrad game theory course, we defined as, uh, them as node. So uh, after the initial node, only A, B, and C are available choices. Well, uh, small a, b, and x, y are choices, but it's going to come up later, right? not immediately after h. So that's, uh, I mean, not immediately after this history. So be careful about this.